for, my old friend, had been with me from the beginning of my career, this light, and it's been a very loyal companion. Now we're in a, a light stream setup with four DLH4s. As our source light, we're using a little tungsten 150 watt light, which is the Dado Classic or the DLH4. And that's going through the parallel beam attachment, which is then getting pushed into a reflector. And that's what's lighting me now. These are all DLH4s and they're tungsten lights. They're tungsten halogen lights and they're, well, it's probably the first Dado light I ever used in my career. And they're used primarily and initially for pack shots, product shots. And the reason they were used for that is because they're the only light that had absolute, complete control optically. In comparison to the other lights, it just leaves them standing. They have a special kind of two focusing lens system which gives them a huge range of spot to flood, but also allows you to put accessories on it that gives you absolute control of the light output. This is the one I'm most excited about because it opens the light up into a new world. And this is a parallel beam attachment. What this does, it look, might look like quite a big, a big lump, but basically what it does is it, it increases the light output and focuses it into a reflector. That's what it's designed for. This uh, parallel beam attachment is the key that fully integrates the DLH4 into the light stream system. So this light here I've got in my hand here is basically what's lighting me at the moment. So we've got a DLH4, a little tungsten 150 watt light, and then we have this parallel beam adapter that integrates it into the Dado light stream system, which you will know I'm really excited by and I use a lot. The setup we have at the moment is a variety of 50 by 50 reflectors. We have a number two there, a number three I think is there, and a number four is there. And we have a backlight which is, I think it's another number two, and then we have this kick light is just producing a tiny bit of sheen on my face here. And that's the number four. And what we've got is we've got DLH4s on the bottom of the stand firing straight up into them with the parallel beam adapter. And now what we'll do is we'll turn them all off and turn them all on individually. Okay, so let's put the key light on first, what we call our main modelling light. And then I think, because it doesn't have as much bite to it that I'd like, so I've put a side light in here as well. And that's, yeah, that's kind of raking across. And because I'm showing products, I thought, you know, it'd be nice to have something lighting from the side. And then the fill light. There you go. And then finally, we'll show the back light. See, I have quite deep eye sockets, so I, and I tend to squint a bit. So sometimes I have a furrow brown, I, you know. But I do still like to light myself quite dramatically. So I hope you don't mind, but it's quite dramatic lighting, really. So when we're discussing light stream, we're basically discussing, fundamentally, we're discussing the parallel beamed light into proprietary reflectors that all have a different quality to them. Now, the number one and number two reflectors, like I say, they move light around without changing the quality of it too much. And number one basically is a direct representation of what's projected into the reflector. So we have five reflectors, and each one of those reflectors has a different character, and you get different results depending on what reflector you use. So it's a combination of what light you put into the reflector, what size that reflector is, and what grade that reflector is. So the different reflector grades all have a different character. So we have a DLH4 lighting setup here, and we're using four DLH4s, one, two, three, four, and they're all having performing different functions. So one of them's doing a kind of key light, three quarter front, another one's doing a side light to give a bit more heat to the side. The third one here is doing a fill light with kind of combination of two reflectors, like an eye light reflector, a more softer kind of general fill. And then we've got a light here, the back lights, again, a combination of two lights. One reflector's doing kind of overall backlight and the other reflector's doing kind of more of a, a what they call a kicker, which is like a sheen of light in the shadow side of the cheek here. And the other one is doing a more general backlight. See them individually on and off that might be good so so uh, let's take uh, so this is the side light here and you can see that's just giving a bit more heat on this side here to give it a bit more free dimension and then let's see the key light off so that's the key light uh, back on again and then the fill light and the fill light comprises of two actual two reflectors we've got the number four soft reflector and we've also got a little eye light here as well it's a 50 by 50 number four 
reflector and it's also got a little 15 by 7 reflector that's we're just using for the eye light and that's I think a number two. So this light here is hitting the back light and the side kick light so let's turn that off and you see that's separating me from the background. So that's a spot without the parallel beam adapter. You can see how bright that is. And then when I put the parallel beam adapter on, again, and then I go back to the flood position, I mean, that, you can see that's a huge amount brighter, in fact, five times brighter. So that's why we use these. I think tungsten is, is probably still the most naturalistic looking light. And it's got a warmth to it, it's got a real soul to it. It's got a feel to it, like sunlight or like firelight. So DLH4 have very small point sources of light due to the fact that the bulbs are relatively small compared to, say, an LED light where the chip of an LED will be far greater in size. And it has a kind of naturalism because of that. You know, it's, it's a burning filament, incandescent burning filament. That's the benefit of tungsten. It looks really like sunlight because it's an incandescent source um, like the sun. And the other benefit of tungsten light is it gives a, a full spectral response without any problems with um, going into magentas and greens that sometimes the cheaper LEDs give you and also HMIs can drift a bit as well. So if you want something to look very naturalistic and particularly when shooting food or something that the fidelity of the colours are really important, um, you can't go wrong with tungsten light. You're, you're mimicking a kind of hun a sun hotspot that will be coming through the window and you're doing it with an incandescent, a small incandescent light and one of these hard reflectors. And it's very convincing. I mean, it's, that's the advantage of tungsten light. It's, like I said earlier, it's got this soul to it. It's got this warmth to it. And used in combination with the light stream system, you can basically get very naturalistic looking light. Now, one thing about light stream, what it does is that by virtue of the light coming off a reflector rather than the light being direct from the fixture, is that you get this one stage removed feeling and this appeals to a lot of people because it doesn't feel as lit it doesn't feel like you don't you don't have the sense that it's a film light you know the problem with film lights sometimes is they look like a film light to get something that feels natural is is the battle for cinematographers and tungsten as i said earlier is a more traditionally natural source of light but when you put it into a reflector you're removing it one more stage from the kind of character of the fixture light naturally is bouncing off surfaces all the time. Our, our experience of light is mainly reflected light. You know, unless you're looking at the sun directly, you're looking at a bunch of reflections. In fact, when you look at stuff, you're looking at light being reflected off it. So our experience of the world is very much uh, a reflected light experience. So when, when you use reflected light in cinematography, you're staying true to that kind of flow of light that you're naturally experiencing. And I think that creates a more naturalistic way of lighting. As a DOP, you need tools that produce consistent results. It's very important to minimise the variables on a film set and you want your equipment, you want to know your equipment intimately and you want it to basically be able to perform day after day at a high level. I mean, this is an incredibly versatile little light and remember it can be used with the parallel beam adapter, with the light stream system, you can use it with the imaging systems for precision work. You can project gobo images, 35mm transparencies. You can use a shutter system on it. We have a purpose-built one, the DP2, which the shutter's inbuilt. You can use shutter blades or irises on it. So really, it's an incredibly versatile light. It's probably the most versatile light I've ever used with the work I do, because it can just do so much. Even though it's such a small little light, it's got a huge range from spot to flood. And with a wide angle attachment, it can go even broader. So the beam is homogenized from the edge of the beam here, all the way through to the center of the beam and back to the edge. In fact, if you've got a light meter and you went along with a light meter from the edge all the way through, you won't even get a tenth of a stop variation. You'll get nothing, it's just a clean line. There's other accessories to this that I haven't shown you today. You've got beam spreaders, you've got soft boxes you can put on the front. I mean, it's, it's incredibly versatile little light. This is my little friend here, DLH4. It's my little friend. And uh, we've worked together for many years and it's never let me down. I love it. <laughs>